So this is uh, Anthurium cavallii, uh, and isn't it gorgeous? Uh, look at those those flowers. Well, actually, what you're seeing there probably isn't the flowers. What you're seeing is the spath. Um, so these are unusual. The actual flowers are those tiny white things you can see along here. Um, so these, what we call flowers, actually is a spath. This here is the spath, the large, uh, almost like a coloured leaf. Um, and this is the spadix here, um, this tubular kind of um, column of very small flowers in there. So we refer to it all as a flower, but actually the flowers are tiny, tiny little bits just in there. Um, and we have this uh, beautiful effect with this, uh, this spath flower on this uh, anthurium. And uh, this time of year, so I'm, I'm recording this in November, and uh, just look at it out there. Um, it's not very encouraging to go out into the garden. It's cold, it's wet, it's windy, it's miserable. Um, <laughs> Uh, we've just come out of a lockdown actually um, in the year of uh, COVID in 2020 um, and so I've been focusing on plants in the home and like a lot of people uh, I've, I've been drawn to plants like this where you've got this lovely glossy architectural um, leaves uh, all year round and these, uh, these rather wonderful, let's call them flowers, um, for well, several months. Um, uh, probably less likely to flower, um, continue flowering through the winter, but at the moment this looks just gorgeous. More commonly you would see uh, these anthuriums uh, in red, um, and uh, here's a couple of examples of some, some lovely uh, red uh, anthuriums. In the same group of plants as the, uh, the peace lily, the uh, spathophyllum, uh, the kind of the white and green versions that are probably the most common uh, that uh, you will see. These plants, however, are not um, not really house plants. We grow them as house plants because it's too cold outside. But their natural habitat is, of course, the rainforest. So, in one sense, it would love to be outside. It's looking out the window, thinking, "Oh, a bit of rain, yes, please." Um, so, but they they live um, um, naturally. Um, they're indigenous to kind of South American rainforests, where the humidity is very, very high. There's a clue in the name there, uh, rainforest, um, and uh, yeah, so they that they would absorb much of their moisture um, from the uh, from the air. Um, they might even develop aerial roots out at the bottom here, um, but they would certainly be in a different situation there in terms of that humidity that uh, than we are here. So um, the humidity in the rainforest. I've been there myself, not to South America, but other rainforests in Asia. Um, and in the Caribbean, um, it's kind of 80, 90 percent humidity, and you know you just got to walk out there and you know breathe, and you start to sweat. Um, I don't normally agree with sweating very much; it's almost against my religion. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so very, very humid. And inside our home, this boy here—that's the killer. Those radiators, when they come on in the winter they dry up the air so the humidity comes right down inside the house this time of the year to way below 50%, maybe even, even as low as, I don't know, 20, 30%, I've never measured it, but it's a very dry uh, air because of the heating that we have to use to keep us warm. Um, so the temperature isn't bad. The, these guys like a warm temperature, you know, kind of probably 18 to early 20s would be, would be perfect for them. So during the summer months, when we haven't got the heating on and it's got a bit of warmth um, um, in, in the house, um, be, uh, be quite happy. I've put it on this windowsill mainly for the video. Um, to be honest, it wouldn't like being in direct sunlight and that window when the sun is out on those rare occasions here in Wales, um, uh, uh, when the sun comes through the window, it would probably um, scorch, these, um, scorch these leaves. Bear in mind that in the rainforest, always just think back to where they naturally grow. In the rainforest, you've got the canopy of the, um, the big trees there producing kind of dappled shade, which is the perfect environment for this. So dappled shade, high humidity. So I'm actually, I'm keeping him 
either on my desk here or over here um, uh, you know during the, um, most most of the most of this uh, most of this winter that's my plan so it'll get some it'll get some decent light um, actually probably it'd be best where this um, this plant is because this is again it's another rainforest plant this dendrobium uh, here which flowers in the spring nice perfumed flowers that's another rainforest plant there we are look you can see some of the aerial roots there um, so they will be absorbing moisture from the air so you can go around I'm showing you how to do it here with a little misting gun and spray a little cloud of mist over the um, over the leaves and over those um, aerial roots I just got to be a little bit careful how I do that because um, I don't want to be spraying water all over this lovely lovely furniture I have a, a wife that I need to look after as well and <laughs> she won't appreciate me spraying water over this lovely uh, lovely furniture so um, on a warm day I suppose I could take it outside into the garden in the winter and give it a spray over the leaves and then bring it back in where's my original plant gone oh come here mate there you are so let's put him back on there so one of the jobs this time of the year then what we need to do is look at ways to increase the humidity around around the leaves and uh, I've mentioned misting just now you could spray there's an action again <laughs> you could spray uh, some water over the uh, over the leaves and over the, um, the flowers the other option is and this is something I'm going to do in the next couple of days I'll do another video is to put that pot either into a bigger saucer or into a big pot cover and put a layer of stones and gravel um, on the bottom of the saucer or in the bottom of the uh, of the pot Pour some water onto the um, onto the gravel, onto the stones, so that um, you've got a layer of water. Stand the pot on top. What you don't want is the pot to be um, stood actually on the water. So that's why you've got the pebbles there, so that the pebbles, you know, the the, the pebbles house the water, and the, the pot stands on top. And that water that's within the pebbles then evaporates and produces moist air rising up. Through the um, through the leaves there, giving a little bit of extra humidity. So I'm going to do that in a separate video. But um, one thing I am going to do just now is to um, prune off. You see this dead um, flower stem here. He needs to be cut off right down to the base. So let me just find my scissors. So one of the jobs then that I'm going to do now is just to remove this. Um, if you can see him there, this dead flower stem here. So I'm going to follow the stem back down to the heart of the plant got some sharp scissors here it's actually quite a strong stem so let's see what I'm not. oh there we go job done so we cut him out and that'll be a job that we do um, every few weeks I guess as these um, these delightful flowers uh, go over so um, come back um, and have a look at our um, our next video which is going to be uh, showing how we can set that pot into a little reservoir of water on some stones. It's worth bearing in mind that um, these plants do not like to be soaking wet all the time. They, they, one of my favorite expressions, I saw this on a, on a garden center sign once when I was doing a little inspection, it said, um, it was like a, a tip on how to look after houseplants, and it said, houseplants can't swim. Don't overwater them. So we allow this compost, and if you can see there, starting to go a little bit dry there on the top. I had water a few days ago uh, so it's important that you don't soak that compost. If it does get wet leave it to dry out. That's one, one of the other advantages of having it stood on some stones which is going to be um, uh, the subject of my next video. We'll, we'll, I'm going to get that set up on the right sort of stones um, so that the, the water can drain out through the bottom of the um, of the pot and it gets a bit of air in there. They need to breathe um, just remember again that these guys are used to absorbing moisture from the from the atmosphere um, and we're asking it to perform um, in an environment which isn't natural to it. It can be done, uh, you just need to overcome that humidity problem and uh, allow those roots to breathe. Hope that helps. Any questions, any comments, uh, any problems you're having um, uh, with your, with your houseplants um, please let us know and we'll try and um, see if we can help or maybe somebody else on YouTube can help. Thanks very much. Bye for now.